Today on The Journal, we're taking a look at a wide variety of content, everything from nursing to singing. And achieving new goals. It's definitely a show you don't want to miss. Hi, and welcome to The Journal. I'm your host, Ashley Fleischer. And I'm Rob Darouche. We have a ton, ton, ton of content today, so let's jump right in. Our first doc follows a nursing student through a day of on-the-job job training. Here is Learning to Save Lives. O2 set, we're putting them on O2 set. We're, we're really low on supplies too, yeah. Nurses provide care to patients, families, and communities, and are one of the most trusted professions in the world. But what makes a good nurse? Let's sit down with Jessica, a fourth-year nursing student, to find out. So my name is Jessica. I'm a fourth-year nursing student at the George Brown Ryerson Collaborative Program. So bedside nursing, it's a lot of, um, depends on where you are. So if you're in ICU, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. In ER, which I'm more familiar with, it's usually a four-patient um, ratio. And you usually uh, do the orders that the MD prescribes. So a lot of medications, a lot of um, nursing skills in general. Um, and you're the one who recognizes any adverse findings and reports them back to the MD. And basically you're there throughout the whole uh, patient experience until they're discharged. Um, so nursing in general, why I want to get into nursing. So in the beginning, in grade 12, I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want to go into nursing because a lot of my family members did pressure me into it. Um, but after having experience at Scarborough General Hospital and their Merch and their diabetes clinic and their nephrology clinic, I really like the aspect of, you know, hands-on care, uh, being with the patient, not only uh, administering orders, but also being there for a therapeutic relationship um, and just seeing hands-on the effect that nurses can have on a patient's experience and their health overall really inspired me to pursue nursing. Um, and I just like caring for people, like communicating with them, and just um, advocating on their behalf was something that uh, really ins like, was a passion of mine, I guess, mm -hmm. and in the realms of healthcare, so that was great. You know, if you just... Well, did you learn anything, Rob? Uh, nope. I'm dating a nurse, so I kind of knew that, and like, a lot more. Figures, maybe you'd be better at making health decisions then. What are you trying to say? I'm saying maybe don't eat four cheese pizzas when you're lactose intolerant. It's not fun for any of us. All right then. Okay, well, speaking of pizza, Stephen Amos has been a chef for the last 12 years. But now he looks to follow his dream of becoming a coach. Here's switching gears. This is Stephen Amos, a chef for over 12 years who had made the decision to follow his lifelong dream of becoming a soccer and basketball coach. Changing careers is rarely an easy feat, but Stephen is dedicated to making his dream a reality. I face many challenges um, in, in this um, transition. Being a chef, my, my um, schedule is not very flexible, so it's very hard to find a balance between coaching and also being a chef. Stephen started his basketball coaching career last fall as a volunteer coach with the Scarborough Basketball Association. Prior to that, his focus was mainly soccer. Since I started coaching, I've won two trophies um, in soccer, and I won a silver medal in a basketball tournament. Stephen's biggest regret about coaching is not being brave enough to let his parents know that coaching was a career path he wanted to pursue after high school. There are a couple of things I would do done differently. I would say I have more courage to let my parents know that this is something I want to pursue. Also, be more confident in myself.
I'm not nervous of taking the step towards pursuing coaching. It's been my lifelong dream. I'm willing to pursue this dream to the fullest. I'm currently coaching the Scarborough Blues on 11 boys. Since the beginning of their season, Stevens' team has won all but one of their games and are now the 2019 Ontario Basketball League Regional and Provincial Champions. To someone who's ready to follow the dream, has a go for it. Life is very short and you don't have to live in regret. So by all means, pursue your dream. Also, I'll have an open mind towards the challenges that might come across and just have fun. Well, uh, did you learn anything, Ash? Yeah, I learned that you're a master of switching gears. Okay, how about we focus on the docks? You know, let's try to be a little bit more professional. All right, fine. I learned that... Ooh, <laughs> and we're running out of time. Moving on, Chris has been dating a girl from Finland named Yasmin. The next doc follows the lead up to her coming to Canada for the first time. And later in the show, we have a live performance from Duncan Cook, so don't go away. Here's to hear from Helsinki. <laughs> A couple months ago I went on an exchange to Frankfurt, Germany and when I was over there I met a girl named Yasmin at a bar called Cafe Kotz and her and I pretty much hit it off immediately and she ended up staying over for one weekend and then she never left. So she ended up moving in right after that and we were together the whole couple of months that we were over there. During our time we traveled throughout all of Europe. We went to 10 different countries, uh, over 35 or 45 different cities or something like this. And um, when I was over there, I introduced her to a band called the Pack AD, which is a Canadian band. So it was a little piece of Canada that I could bring her, which was, which was fun to, you know, sort of bond over that. And as well, uh, I haven't seen her now for a couple of months since I got back to Canada. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty excited for her to be over here. For It's going to be her first time in North America, and we're going to go to Niagara Falls, and I'm really looking forward to it. So it should be great. Like it almost feels like surreal, you know? Like it doesn't feel like I'm actually going to meet her. I'm so used to her obviously being in Finland. So to actually now go and see her, it's kind of, I don't know. It doesn't feel real, you know? There she is. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> okay.
what would you do if, you know, Andrew lived in another country instead of like right there looking at us? I don't know. Um, long distance is hard. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I guess you gotta just have to try it out. What about you? I would love if Andrew stayed in that country, you know? Bro, that's not what I asked. No, but it's, it is what you asked. That's the thing, because, you know, using correct words is vital for, one example, singing a song. That happens to be the center of our next doc. Here is Toronto Beach's Children and Youth Chorus. Thirteen years ago, I guess, we're in our 13th season, I was teaching lessons in this area and there seemed to be a real interest for singing and music and drama and I thought our neighborhood, our community didn't have something like that. So I decided I'm going to start a choir and it's going to be different than a regular choir. We're not going to be a stand and sing choir. We're going to have drama, we're going to do musicals and choral music. And if I get 20 kids this year, then there's enough interest. In the first year we got 28 kids and now we have over 200. Our rehearsal is never just sitting and singing. There's always some component of moving or getting up and you know figuring something out through body percussion or, or movement of some piece, even with a choral string. The parents get behind us and get on board and so everybody in the family gets invested in the organization and it becomes like a family. Absolutely. And so you don't really want to leave your family. And we want to make sure that even though we are a bigger choir now, that we maintain that feeling that every kid who comes in has a place here and we know them and we care about them and that we want them to be here. So even though the choir and the organization has grown, we really want to maintain that feeling of like a choir family and everyone's welcome and we want it to be a fun and safe place but also a place where you know they can learn and achieve awesome things. I get excited when I come on a Thursday, Wednesdays now too. I get excited to see what we can do, what we can accomplish. I love the kids, I love the people that I work with and I think that it's a really special place and I love doing it. We grew up singing, acting, as kids so it's been a part of my life always. I can't imagine my life without the choir being part of it. It just, it's, um, no matter what kind of a day I'm having or a week I'm having, I come here and I just, I feel this sense of uh, joy and belonging and purpose. Like this is, this is my place. Yeah, I think a lot of the time you're in school, you're doing things, sometimes you don't, you, you're hiding behind something. So here we, we want you to be yourself, and I think that's where you make friendships that are really real and you want to stay. So there are several choirs in Toronto for children, many of which are by audition choirs that, that only select children who have had previous experience with this sort of thing and yes. already sing incredibly well, read music, maybe play an instrument, that sort of thing. But our choir offers something different because we offer a high caliber experience, but we're not tur turning anyone away. Is anyone it? who wants to be here, there's a place for them. As long as they want to sing and act, and they, they want to the work. work hard, then yeah, of course. Sing, act, and work hard, then they're welcome here. And that is different from other choirs. And we still accomplish really awesome things with all of our kids. So in the grand scheme of choirs in Toronto, we're still fairly new in the choral scene. Some of these choirs have been around for 40, 50 years but we've done a lot of great things in a short amount of time with a lot of great kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, they look a lot more like a family than a choir. You can really tell how close they all are. Yeah, it's kind of like how we were here at the journal. You know, I know 
I've been joking around for quite a bit this week, but the next talk is near and dear to our hearts. Psychosis was created by our classmate and friend, Seth Potts. This talk revolves around his brother's experience with dealing with psychosis, as well as the effects it's had on his family. Here is Psychosis. Uh, maybe. Oh. Sometimes I feel like I'm not real. None of this is real. This is all fake. And other times I know the demon's not real, but I still feel the fear and the overwhelming urge that he is real. I'm Kathleen and I'm Troy's mom. Okay, so in, uh, I believe it was December, he went to a concert and um, he got kicked in the back of his head. Someone was crowd surfing and we felt that that's when he, uh, he got a concussion. Um, he was feeling dizzy, disoriented, but then he was okay. And then two weeks later, he fell down the stairs at the TGC and uh, they were concrete. So we believe it again, that's when he had another concussion and he seemed fine. He was working and stuff, but he started getting headaches and they, every three times a week and they were bad and Troy never had headaches. On uh, March 25th, it was his birthday weekend, he couldn't move. He just seemed to shut down. So we rushed him to the hospital and they did a CT scan and MRI. Nothing showed up. Uh, he had it happen again, so we rushed him back to the hospital. Um, since there was nothing technically wrong with him, they just left him. Finally, they, there was a neurologist that saw him and um, the neurologist was like, I'm not sure what it is. But there was a neurologist student and he said he felt that it was because of the, the concussion. So then Troy started having more and more difficulties. It took us almost, I think, seven months before we found out that he had post-concussion syndrome. And then we found out shortly after his post-concussion uh, syndrome psychosis. It's all dead. Nothing from mom. Good. Nothing from mom. Call? Nothing from mom. Text her again. And sometimes I don't know where I am, who I am. All I know is I have this monster who wants me dead. And I don't know whether this is my world or not. It seems like I'm not part of this world. And I'm in this living hell. These monsters were out to get me. Sometimes I am self-aware, and I really and I feel like a burden because my family has to deal with me. And I know I'm not easy when I'm in that state. So it's a red and silver beta fish. They're great starter fish, because they're really interactive. Because it's calming, so when I feel like my reality is slipping and I can't tell the difference, I just, I get focused on the fish because it calms me down by swimming around. It's, it's not like a dog where it demands attention and I can't deal with the dog because if I have problems and the dog f feels it, it won't be good, but the fish will calm me down where humans can't. Um, when it first started, I had, I was, 
I didn't think he would ever get better. But now I see so much progress and so much hope. He's coming back. You know, before he would be so spaced out and so out of it. And now I see Troy a lot. I see who he was coming back more and more and more and more. So I have a lot of hope. I have a lot of hope for him to go into college, a lot of hope for him getting a job. I'm hoping by the end of this month, I can start working maybe one or two days a week. Um, and then go from there, see how I am, and then try college, do business marketing, but I'll probably do it part-time because I don't know if I'll ever be ready to do full-time at all. And then, you know, go to college, graduate, and find a nice job. And that's all for this season on The Journal. Creating this show has been such a fantastic experience. I just wanted to thank everyone from behind the scenes that isn't on camera that helped out with the making. And thank you so, so, so much for watching and watching everyone's hard work. We actually have a live performance from Duncan Cook, who's going to be signing off the show. I'm Rob DeRouche. And I'm Ashley Fleischer. Here's Duncan Cook with Coasting and Find Your Sunshine. California, gonna dip my feet in the ocean. My hands on the wheel, my back's to this town, I'm just coasting. Well, life's been fun, I'm only 21, but the way I'm living this is half done. I gotta get going, gotta get on the road. that anyone could stop me. I'm going back out west. I'm gonna make fresh tracks in the Rockies. I'm gonna drink cold beer and spend the rest of my days playing hockey. It's been my plan for a while and I doubt that you could stop me. Well, life's been fun, I'm only 21, but the way I'm living bed is half done. I gotta get going, gotta get on the run, so I'm burning off some rubber in the setting sun. I'm just coasting, I'm just coasting. one's uh, called Love of Sunshine. Well, I 
Let's make haste while the sun shines. Let's do it right, we got one time. Keep this going till the sun rises. One heart, one love, we're all right. When the drugs and the booze just don't work. Look for music to relieve your pain. When you're broken and everything hurts. Find your sunshine, don't die in your rain again. But let's put an end to the hatred. In the end, with my friends, we will make it. Why tomorrow? Let's do this today. Let sweet melodies take you away. When the drugs in the booze just don't work, look for music to relieve your pain. When you're broken and everything hurts, find your sunshine, don't die in the rain again. Well, let's see the world before it blows up. Let's park this Dutch like we won't give it up. By tomorrow, let's do this today. Let sweet melodies take you away. When the drugs and the booze just don't work, look for music to relieve your pain. When you're broken and everything hurts, find your sunshine, don't die in the rain. Find your sunshine. Don't die in the rain Use this music To ease all your pain oh. When the drugs and the booze just don't work Look for music to relieve your pain When you're broken and everything hurts Find your sunshine, don't die in your rain again.